Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Welcome, everybody. Thinking about a vacation, how about Theodore Roosevelt National Park? Theodore Roosevelt is an icon when you think about national monuments, national parks. Think about him when he camped out there with John Muir up in Yosemite National Park. But there's an entire national park that is dedicated to him. Um, He didn't create it, but apparently this is a place to go if you love wildlife and crazy geology and rock formations and an amazing landscape that is very dramatic. And Debbie Stone, we call her Fire Monkey because that's what, you know, the name she was given when she was in Bhutan. Uh, she went there recently. She's on a major road tripping experience this summer. And um, she went to Theodore Roosevelt National Park up in North Dakota. I would, you know what? I always thought it was South Dakota for some reason, but she went up there and she's back on today to talk about her experience. Her article's up on nationalparktraveling.com. And you'll also see it in the fall issue of Parks and Travel Magazine. But Fire Monkey, you went to the bad lands, and apparently they're good lands. <laughs> I did indeed, and I think uh, you know they're bad lands for they were given that uh, that name for you know for a reason because way back when uh, people were coming west and they would come across the plains and. They'd come to this very, you know, very rough and kind of odd and strange uh, formations. And, you know, the conditions there, there was not very much water. The the temperatures were extremely hot or extremely cold. And so, you know, people kind of gave that uh, the term of badlands because of the, such a harsh and uh, kind of grueling journey that they had. But they're they're beautiful. <laughs> The Bad mm-hmm. Badlands are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I always thought it was South Dakota. I think even on our last radio chat, I was like, oh, you're going to South Dakota. You're like, no, it's North Dakota. Get it? <laughs> but isn't the Badlands kind of stretch between both states? Yes, and they overlap. There's the Badlands in South Dakota and the Badlands in North Dakota. So, you know, you can say Badlands, and it's basically the Dakotas. Um, and from what I understand, there are actually other kinds of Badlands in the United States, but these are the most kind of, yeah. I think, uh, iconic and um, well-known in terms of, of uh, the geography in that particular part of the, the country. And it's they're they're just they're they're be- it's beautiful. I don't know that kind of. That kind of geography always, to me, it's just, it's fascinating. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily fit those parameters of when, you know, oh, look at those gorgeous shaped mountains and those beauty, you know, that kind of thing. This is really, you know, kind of like, uh, I don't know, rough and, and, and twisted and jagged in places and furrowed in places and grooved. And I, I don't know, it's just, to me, that, that there's this real special kind of beauty to that. I, mm. I love it. In the Badlands, uh, we know the Badlands from when we lived out in um, Julian and in Borrego Springs in Southern California, part of San Diego County. In the east, we were up in the mountains and then the desert of Borrego Springs, which was a little desert village within a desert state park. And the Borrego Desert State Park was the largest uh, state park in the country, I think, in the contiguous mm-hmm. states. Anyway, the 48 contiguous states, uh, 600,000 acres of desert. And they had a Badlands section which is like it it was like these crazy mud caves and rock formations and just like wow like you could see the good bad and the ugly being filmed out there <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean is that what it was like for you? I was looking at yeah, your photos I, I and I'm like, so. wow, you know? Yeah, it, it, yeah. that's a very good, a, a good description for it, you know. But I, I think it's a, it's, it's a very mesmerizing landscape because it is so odd and strange. And I think people maybe who come from different places around the country are not used to that kind of scenery. And so it's really, it's really unique and then it's very special. And so I think that's why the park is, is uh, you know, what it's known for other than the fact that it's you know of course has has ties to um one of our presidents theodore roosevelt but it's i don't it's that and and the wildlife i think it's you know the scenery and the wildlife and the history um all share kind of center stage there Mm. i love you can kind of see it changing 
you know, morphine. If you go there and you wait two years and go back again, if you have that opportunity and you go and photograph the same thing, like two years later, you will see slight changes. And there will be slight, but they're changing. Yes, so exactly. It's always exactly. morphine. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and, and things, you know, things like erosion and all different kinds of yeah. things are are causing it to to change. Which is that way, you know, if people do come back, it's it's like you know they can say, oh, look at it. it's it's like this part is mm-hmm. kind of a different landscape, you know, and it's yeah. it's like when you go see you know glaciers that have changed and and yeah. have receded, mm-hmm. and and you know you can see the 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 if you come back so often, you can actually see that that happening. Well, I know you talk about glaciers. Last year, you were in New Zealand hiking in glaciers in these tropical rainforests. And then this year, you were even in Olympic National Park with these rainforests. Mm-hmm. So, like, you've seen this, you know, and you're in Santa Fe. That's where you're based. And Santa Fe, New Mexico has that geology and rock formations and kind of like the Badland vibe. So, it's interesting for you to, I, you know, to hear you and read your story going there and that you were so awe inspired about this area, you know, and, and the diversity, I mean, you, for you, I mean, you go all over the world. How many, how many countries now do you think? And how many states? Um, well, almost, almost a hundred countries, not quite. And yes, that's all amazing. seven continents and then all 50 states with North Dakota, it was number 50. So oh, this was a, that's a this was a deal. goal. Yeah, it was a goal that I had set a number of years ago when I really um, started travel writing in earnest. And I thought to myself, you know, what, what are some goals I can set? And so, you know, it was the continents and of course going to as many countries as I could, but then it was like, you know, our country has amazing scenery and every state has amazing scenery and amazing, interesting history and culture. And, and so, you know, I thought, you know, I want to visit every state and, um, you know, I can't, I can't probably spend weeks and weeks on end in each state, but I can go to parts of the state that that attract me or that interest me. And in North Dakota, you know, I, I nature has always been my focus, and so I, I wanted mm. to go to the state's national park. You know. Yeah. Well, and and going to a national park when it's a national park, it's the highest level of protection for a reason. Um, so that's what's interesting to me too. It's not really just about Teddy Roosevelt, right? Because he didn't necessarily declare his own park. He lived in the Correct. area and they named it for him, right? But it's really because of the geology and the and the nature and everything that it became a, a national park. Absolutely. And, you know, it was it became a national park, you know, many, many, many years, um, you know, after, I mean, after, long after his death, basically. And, um, but, but he had a special... Uh, you know, tied to the area. He had come to the area, loved the ruggedness uh, of the, the Badlands landscape. And then he came back a year later because he um, suffered. Um, in, his uh, mother and his wife passed away actually on the same day, a double whammy there. And wow. so he came hmm. back to this place that he he sought healing and, you know, solitude. And, uh, you know, he found, he became a, a cattle rancher and he, he found um, he found himself again, so to speak, and so he says that his Dakota experience was really, really uh, the basis for all of his preservation efforts. And you know, you're talking about national parks. I think he created mm-hmm. five of them during his his tenure, um, like the Grand Canyon, I think Crater Lake. I um, I want to say Wind Cave in South Dakota, Yellowstone, maybe Mesa Verde. I, I mean, there was a number mm-hmm. of, of national parks mm-hmm. that he created. Not to mention all the uh, national forests and federal mm-hmm. reserves, and you know, so so they they that he had this this was a special corner uh, of the country for him for so many reasons and so they they uh, honored him with naming this national hmm. park after him and it's and and there is you know the gateway town there Medora is you know uh definitely 
uh, there's a lot of history there and a lot of uh, his his mark is left there, so to speak. And uh, so there are, you know, some statues and some things and named for him. And, you know, you can go into the, the, the museum there and and find out a little bit more about him. But, yeah, it's it's um, it's a, it's great. The combination of, like I said, the history of the nature of the wildlife is just it's it's wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, the wildlife, you, you're seeing bison or buffalo, uh, everybody's yeah. got a different name. So, you know, we always think about Yellowstone. And when you think about that immediately, Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, which you did a few years back. Um, but you definitely saw them here. And when you went to Theodore Roosevelt National Park, you got to see them. And you did you get to see the wild horses? Um, we saw them from a distance. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were out there, and we uh, actually were driving along. There's a, a a scenic route that you can take in the South Unit. It's about 36 miles, and um, you you know if you catch them in a certain area, the the rangers will tell you you know kind of where they where they can be or where they can hang out. And um, so if you're lucky, you know with wildlife, it's it's one of those things. It's it's all about luck and it's all about Mm -hmm. you know the wildlife don't you know i mean you don't make the decision about when the wildlife appears you know so it's it's all about luck but we did see the distance and and, you know there's something so beautiful about those wild horses and they're they're in they're in herds and uh, i found that interesting to hear about they're in little herds of five to fifteen and there's Mm -hmm. always a stallion and mares and their offspring and they're all together in these like little groupings and it's 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 it to me it's it's just a thing of beauty to watch them. It really is. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more of a closer view, but that's, you know, you can't, you really can't uh, get to them unless they're close to you, so to speak, you know. Yeah, I think there's a spirit of America. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They're, they're and, magic. And, and they, you know, they are, now they've been recognized in this park um, as part of the, cultural and historic landscape of, of the place, which I think is wonderful um, because there was a change of policy. They, they, did, they did try to remove them, and uh-huh. then there was a uh, change, and um, mm. they, just, they are now there, and they are considered a part of this special park. Yeah, it's part of the okay. 70s, uh, the Velma Johnson, Velma Johnson Act that happened in the mm-hmm. mid-'70s to protect mm-hmm. them. And, um yes. It's amazing. It, they're all across the West, and it's a it's a um, an interesting conversation about wild horses. Who wants them? Who doesn't? And it's it's kind of political and gets crazy. But for them to be in a national park and be protected is special, and yes. not happening in a lot of places. And so it's really it's you're lucky to see them. You know, you really are. It's it. There we're losing them across the West, and. It's really, when you see them, they're just these magnificent beings. They're just, uh, I do call them the spirit of America. Nancy, we've always said that, right? They're like the spirit, they're just these. Well, first of all, we couldn't have settled this country without them. That's a given. Everybody will say that. But Mm -hmm. the thing is, are they native to this country? Or a reintroduced, I've heard them called reintroduced species. If you say reintroduced, that means they were there before, died out and had to be brought back, so reintroduced, which to me, it's like taking a book out of the library. You took it out, and then you put it back. So the book was there to begin with, so reintroduced means to me they've always been here. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, How the do you bison, reintroduce? Yeah. And, and, and I was going to say the bison, you know, are also protected, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and that that was Theodore Roosevelt's. Um, you know, it was it was part of his uh, foresight to to uh, attempt to protect them, and so um, you know they had legislation that came across on a federal level to protect those animals, mm. and you know, so it's. Um, I think you know they they're just. I find them fascinating. I find the, the wild horses beautiful. I find mm-hmm. the bison yeah. fascinating. I think they're so mm. awesome. Such a such a, a curious 
creature and um, so very, uh, you know, kind of odd looking and many, you know, they're shaggy and they're, they're hulking and they, you know, they have these, you know, horns and, and yet, you know, you watch them. And we had a bunch across the road with the mamas and the babies and, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I could watch the bison for a, for a, a long, long time. And listen, time. the prairie dogs. <laughs> Can we just talk about the prairie dogs? Because I <laughs> seriously have a thing about prairie dogs. No, like even when we were up in northwest, uh, northeast Colorado, they had prairie dogs. And everybody's laughing at me. They're like, you know, we really consider them pests. And I'm like, um, <laughs> I consider them the coolest, you know, yes. coolest, you know, little ground critters ever. Um a lot of people don't like them. <laughs> so I think but they, I love I love them. I think they're very curious. They're very entertaining. Um, they have these prairie dog towns in uh, all over the country. But you know, in 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 the Theodore Roosevelt National Park, they um, had several of them. And you know, they're all over the place. And you just stop and you just watch them, and they're just popping out of their holes or going in and out. And they're just they're they're just so entertaining to me. But I you know, did a little research, and then I was also asking the ranger about them, and he said they had a very sophisticated, actually, Mm -hmm. um, animal language. Um, So so I I found that very interesting, and and what you hear is – you know what we hear are all these like little squeaks kind of thing, but but actually they are are transmitting messages that are are much more detailed than you think. And and the example given was they can say they can say well there's a human coming, or whatever the the the, the <laughs> uh, noise is for a human. There's something coming near their burrow, but also it's something that's tall, big, and something they said that has the col- like wearing a color, a specific color. Mm-hmm. And so I just thought that was fascinating because I had no idea. And most people, when they think about prairie dogs, they just don't think about anything uh, of intelligence normally. Mm. You know what? I, I, they remind me of meerkats just from the ah. ground aspect and the, the whole habitat, like how they have their system, their network, their family tunnels and communication Mm -hmm. and meerkats in South Africa. They, I mean, they're crazy cool. I could sit and watch meerkats all day long. And when we were driving from um, where it was, we were driving from Natchitoches, Louisiana through into Mississippi and we were getting close to the Mississippi border and pure daylight, like two in the afternoon these baby raccoons went to cross the street and all of us on the road were like, stop, stop, stop. Um, you can tell we were from out of state. <laughs> Just from that, you know, we're like, Oh, you know, and my immediate reaction was they were meerkats. And Nancy was like, no, they're baby raccoons. And then we saw more. Oh. And I'm like, no way. These are baby raccoons crossing, but they looked just so like meerkats. So, right. So like meerkats, they looked like meerkats. And I just, I don't know, these, I think all of these animals, like possum and all of that, they, they are cool critters and they have a way to survive that we could learn from. They have a tenacity out of them and communication that is just incredible. I find the yes. fairy dogs, yeah. the communication, they, it's amazing. They hold, they hold a place in nature as does every single species, whether you like them or you don't like. I don't like mosquitoes, especially right now. But they hold a place in nature for a reason. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think back. and I think also, you know, if if you take the time to observe and use your observation skills, you can learn a lot about creatures. I think if you stop mm-hmm. and watch them for a while, and I think, you know, in a park like this where you can stop and pull off uh, the road and walk mm-hmm. uh, on little short trails or, or whatever, and then, you know, you can you can watch and observe from a safe distance, of course, but you really can get a lot if you just give yourself, if you pause and give it some time instead of just driving going, oh, look, there's a bison. Oh, look, there's, you know, this kind of thing. But if you stop and you watch, and especially with something like, I mean, prairie dogs, these these are just really interesting creatures, or at least they are to me. Uh, but I'm, I'm fascinated to me. with wildlife like you too. You know, you, you yeah. all like wildlife. And we, I, I don't know, there's just so much we can learn as humans from wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And the other thing, 
too is you got to see like pronghorn being in that park. Like I would, I, you know, I would really love to see them in the grand, grand Southwest, you know, the grand West, let's put it that way. Yes. We've seen they're, they're native in the Southwest too. And we've seen them being reintroduced and seeing the process of them be like in Buenos Aires, national wildlife refuge. We've seen them out near you in, in uh, Santa Fe, between Southwest Colorado and Santa Fe, we've seen them there, but this is, this is an iconic American species. I mean, they're so many of us get them confused with deer and they're not, right. they're antelope versus deer. This is a whole, I yep. mean, they're yes. beautiful. And they're, you know, they are the, you know, the plains creatures uh, and the way that they move is just, uh, you know, they're very graceful and uh, they are extremely uh, fast. It, it's to me, it's, you know, that's another thing that I, I learned also, you know, that they are um, the second fastest uh, land animal in the world behind the cheetah. And uh, they Whoa. can, you know, get up to 60 miles per hour, I think, of speeds, uh, and they can go for great distance. So uh, even though the cheetah can go from, you know, 1 to 100, so to speak, in, in seconds, the cheetah cannot sustain their speeds over long distances, whereas the pronghorn can. Um, and they just, they're just, they're graceful. They're beautiful. They move so hmm. rapidly and beautifully, like flying across that, that landscape. And so, yeah, I think it's a, it's a wonderful national park for people to see uh, creatures that they normally wouldn't see in whatever region they're in, you know? So when you went, you, you talk about this 36 mile scenic loop and that's, you know, when I think about social distancing and people having limited resources now, too, you know, national parks are and parks and forests. This is something you can do. Gas is cheaper. You can take a drive. And maybe, you know, if there's a lot of people somewhere, just, you know, drive by them and go wave at them. And if you get on a trail and no one's wearing masks, just kind of turn your back like we do. We're not, we're not being rude. It's, hey, you know, so in social distancing, Parks are the place to go, but sometimes they get crowded. And I think these scenic drives allow for, you know, I don't know, if you to time it better. What was it like for you in regards to people maybe, you know, coming in too fast or, you know, was it crowded, I, not crowded? I, it was not crowded. Um, it was not at all crowded. And the scenic drive was not very crowded at all. In fact, it was. Uh, pretty tame and um, you know you might pull up somewhere and if there was one or two other cars that would be it Uh, plenty of room to social distance Um, we took little trails and never saw another person (laughs) you know we it it was it was very easy to maintain uh, social distancing and uh, you know like you said if 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 there were we never saw big crowds of people you know waiting and looking at the animals. Wow. I mean, sometimes you'd find sometimes you find a couple of cars in one place, and they were all stopped. But people, for the most part, were in their cars, or they were standing right next to them and taking photos. And you know, everybody just kind of kept to their own space. I, I found it, it you know, very liberating once again to to be on the road and to be able to have the choice to to stop where I want to stop, and if something doesn't look like it's going to be uh, safe in terms of, of social distancing or masks or whatever, you know, move on, like you said. And that's the beauty of, of, a, of a road trip, you know. Right, right. And then you talked about um, Painted Canyon. Oh, uh, so beautiful. What, what's that like? Because I'm thinking like petrified forest kind of thing. It's just these just, oh, it's just, it's one of the most photographed places in the state, but it's got these beautiful rock layers that are very colorful, and you can stand at the rim, and um, you can, you know, look at it, and people, a lot of people stand at the rim and take photos, and people were at the rim, and they were, you know, spaced out, and there was never a problem there. Uh, There's a Mm. visitor center, which is not open, um, but it is a beautiful place to look there. People come back and watch the sun set on them. And if you want to get really up close with those layers, you, there's a trail that goes down into it. um, And you can, you know, get way down into the, to the bottom to the, to see those interesting layers. And, uh, but you do have to go back up again. (laughs) (laughs) You made me of that in your (laughs) 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 
question. I loved it when you were going, remember what goes down must come up. I was, I was clapping yeah, that bit off the were laughing true. about that today. Yeah, yeah it's because like, it's so true. Yeah. It's, it's 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 very true, you know. I mean, people <laughs> just like with a Grand Canyon or any, you know, like people start going, "Oh, look, it's fun. You can get, we can get down." And then it's like, yeah, you can get down pretty quickly to some place if it's, you know, by momentum if you're running down the canyon. But it's like, yeah, then you get down and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to go up now. What about uh-huh. that? What two thousand? You know, me. it's <laughs> Colorado <laughs> National Monument and Nancy's up by the car and I'm like, oh, let me go down just a little bit. And then I was like, oh. Uh. And then I realized as I came back up the trail, like <laughs> yeah. I'm really Why on I the didn't edge. Go down. Then I realized, I know, I realized I was really on the edge, and like this, and I'm like, I'm not good at that stuff. And then it was yeah. like, uh oh. And then yeah. what? Do I stand it? You know me and mountain pack. You went to Ure, okay? So <laughs> you know what I'm talking. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yes. I'm no, no. You went to Ure, Colorado. You know what I mean about mountain yep. passes and all that. Yep. Mm-mm. Yep. No, no. I, I'm going to pee in my pants now. Is this one of those moments that's going to happen? No, you're going to be a big girl. You're going to get up there. You're not going to look down because if you look down, you are going to do something you just really don't want to do right now. Get up that hill. And then you start climbing. And I was like, how did I get down here? What did I do? How do I get up? No, uh-uh, no. I'll never do yeah, that well, again, that's, by the way. You know, that's that's. <laughs> You know, that but is the one fun. thing people people get excited about going down into something, but then it's they they realize you know when they start coming back up again, it's like oh dear, it's like where's <laughs> the <laughs> elevator? Yeah, yeah. where's the what that got down? Where's the elevator back up? I know <laughs> that that's what we need is the elevator. Yeah, it's national park. Excuse me, <laughs> Grand Canyon. Yeah. We're at the base. Yeah. Can you take us back to the top? Like Gunnison, <laughs> yeah. the Black Canyon of the Gunnison, right? When you went there, yeah, didn't exactly. You want to yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Dude, but you went, you went down there. Like we didn't, we, you went, you, you got down, you got down, girl. <laughs> like that. Awesome. Yeah, you know, it's uh, to me, it's always in, an interesting perspective. You know, from the rim is a beautiful perspective, but when you go down, I mean, when I went down into the Grand Canyon, I, uh, it just provided such a really different perspective of the whole oh, of yeah. the whole canyon you know it's it's amazing it's it's marvelous and as you're walking down you get to see the different layers and um you know then you get down to the to the bottom and it's like wow this is just wow it's holy different, cow different than the top you know <laughs> yeah I think it's more spectacular from the bottom you it's know cuz now you're in it whereas yes. when you're at the top you're just looking down over it you, you know got I mean? it you got yeah. it. I think it's 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 uh, you know I, I encourage people just sometimes to make an extra effort because I think that they will be really yeah. wowed by the the experience. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I agree. I think, even though I, I don't want to walk back up it. I know, but <laughs> I will give you a shout out on Hell's Canyon too when you did the the rafting oh, trip. That was I think that I yeah. think being in the water is the best experience to be yes. able to look all around because you just, you really get it at that point because you're in the middle of the water. You are part of what crafted yes. those canyons, those walls, those national, yep. not national, but natural like formations, but yep. badlands. I mean, it, that area too, you had rivers going through, right? That, Absolutely, a little, these yeah, a little Missouri carves out through there, and uh, yeah, it's you know, it like I said, it's this place where things have just been carved and twisted, and just mm-hmm. um, so so it, it it it's it's like it's unique, very very unique, and um, you know, coming from mm-hmm. other canyons, you know, it's it's I, I love canyons, I think they're just they're spectacular. So this painted canyon was truly. Truly, uh, spect- as just as spectacular as I'd heard it was, and um, mm. yeah, so it's 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 a it's a it's a really wonderful national park, and the little town that is the gateway for the South Unit is is very special itself. Medora is a really such a tiny little wee little hamlet, and I think there's only you know a hundred little over a hundred people that are basically year round wow. residents, and it's yeah. it's. You know, got, but it's got so much going on for it, and you know they've got a the the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in there. They've got this this Demore mm-hmm. State Historic Site. Uh, you know, I didn't know what was who was 
who was Medora or what was this name for? And it turned out it was a marquee, uh, <laughs> which is just bizarre. You know, you're thinking that somebody of, of a French you know, aristocrat that it, that it has a connection with this place in North Dakota. And it's, I mean, that, those are the kinds of things when you find them out, you're like, oh, my gosh, how did this happen? And it's like, no, well, he came over there and, you know, he was an entrepreneur and wanted to make his fortune over there in the cattle industry. And he named the town. There was a, a church in the town that he, he, he created and constructed, and he named the town for his wife, whose name was Medora. <laughs> Amazing. Medora. I, I, love, I love this, though. Because also, I mean, it's such a tiny town. When I was reading the article. I'm like, even like the 120 hardy souls, as you say. I was like, oh, I love that. I love those words because it's like you're in this old west town. And you know that the weather gets crazy over winter. Oh. Prairie land. I mean, you know, this is like yes. not the easiest place. And part of the beauty of this area is of the history of the people going through it and settling the land, the pioneers. So yes. I find that, and- you know, just fascinating. And then you throw a you know a French <laughs> aristocrat in the mix, and you're like, oh my Why gosh, not? you know, it's just, it's just, it it was, you know, and he's got this, you know, house that's called, they've dubbed the chateau, so you know, you you can go in there and look at all the, you know, fancy furniture, and they entertained, uh, you know, Teddy Roosevelt was a guest there, and it's just, it, it, to me, it's just like out of out of nowhere of a place in the Badlands, would you expect to see something like this? It just see, I it, love it, it that. Was pretty funny. I love yep. that kind of thing. When you go to a place and all of a sudden here's this. Remember Nancy in Dinuba, California, mm-hmm. Central yeah. California. This mm-hmm. we went there. I mean, this is back in I think 2012, and the Chamber of Commerce lady says you need to go to this place, and we're like, okay, whatever, we'll go wherever. <laughs> we go, and this guy purchased this big mansion, and he's sitting there with a big mansion, <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> Well, I'm going to renovate this. I'm looking at him like, good luck with that. You know Linda Kassam from the IFTWA, the International yes. Food and Travel Run? She's with us, and all of it, you know, her eyebrows go up. Like <laughs> she, she has the eyebrow up look. Yes. You know, she does that, and you know, I mean, she's a diva for a reason. And we're all there, and he's like, no, I'm renovating this whole place. And her eyebrows went up, Nancy's eyebrows went up, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. This place was huge and it's in the middle of a bunch of grapes like really Wild. just it was a a land of grapes tiny tiny town then, with a his one street as a historic downtown <laughs> and it's a cute place i encourage people to go there then, near sequoia national park kings canyon national park all that i love it love that area but it was like what are you doing with this mansion <laughs> there who built well, this and why? There's, you know there's what I mean? Scotty's Castle in Death Valley. Oh, yes, in Death Valley, did, yes. Isn't that crazy? Been there, crazy. yes. It's just, oh, it's insane. But you know what? That's why traveling is so interesting. When you find mm-hmm. an unexpected, unexpectedness oh, yes. <laughs> in a place where you don't, ever anticipate that you would would find something like that and and so yes you know here in you know north western north dakota you know there's this french aristocrat and his chateau and it's it's just to me amongst all the you know old west and cattle and cowboy and you know all that then there's but wait wait there's a bully pulpit golf course i know bully i love that well bully because you know you got to think about teddy roosevelt Yes, the big the, the bully pulpit. Yes, yes. Yeah, the bully oh pulpit, golf course, and then, but listen, listen. <laughs> okay, you've got this. It, you said it's like the twenty-six room house, right? This big fancy place. But then you you're staying there. You can stay there. You can eat. Apparently, there's ice cream and all kinds of good food in Medora. So there's all of this. There's historic state park. So all of this is out there. And there's only 120 people, hearty souls, as you say, that live there. So this is really fascinating to me. I want to go to the town. But you went to some musical. This is, to me now, I'm, I want to see this. Because you were doing this even during the time of social distancing. But it looks like you were social <laughs> distancing anyway to see it. Like, tell what was this that Because like? this was like an you outdoor know, this is, thing. Yes, it's it, the Medora musical is quite well known and famous. 
I did not know this until I went there. And we actually were there on the first night of it opening because it was a delayed opening situation because of the of the the COVID of the virus. And but yeah. they finally opened, and we were there the first night. But um, oh, wow. they you know com- they completely you know only. I can't remember if it was only half or less than half of the amount of people uh, were allowed in, and every other row was open. Mm. And then every uh, you never sat next to a person. In fact, there were several seats yeah. in between you and the next person. Um, so it was, you know, it, it, I felt very safe there, and I had no problem there. Um, and the musical itself, though, it takes place at this beautiful outdoor amphitheater with the, the Badlands in the background. And this is cool. a musical that's been going on for, oh, many, many years. And it's very Western. Uh, there's a Teddy Roosevelt segment. There's a bit of patriotism in it. There's, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, fireworks at the end. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that go on. But it's, it is like the thing in Medora. And people people come sometimes almost they make it a pilgrimage of every year they come to the Medora musical you know and Hmm. so we when we um looked at the license plates and cars we saw them from all over the country um they were wow you know people that were coming um and it was really it was you know I but I had no idea and you know it was it's like oh my gosh little Medora has this like really well-known musical big big musical extravaganza and then they cool. also do a, a teddy roosevelt show this one man show and a comedy like magic show and i mean for a little town um mm. to put this together and of course they bring in people you know for the summer to help with all all of these things but it just i mean i want they have a visit a little visitor center in town and it's you know, it, it was a nicer visitor center than a lot of bigger towns that I've seen with visitor centers, and I was <laughs> I was very impressed. You know, was very impressed. Uh, you know and what? It's, it's, From it's, other travel writers going to we, Nancy and I have not done North or South Dakota on our tour yet. Uh, you know, everyone we travel full time going there. to parks and public lands, and we have not done this area yet. And I've heard nothing but good about going yes. to these two states and how the states really embrace tourism. Oh, In fact, they do. Nancy, I, you used some, some of their statistics mm-hmm. on some of our tourism-related exactly. articles. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they really get it. And I think when you have a small town that really embraces it, it's an example because they're understanding the heritage and the beauty of their history and then, you know, obviously the heritage, their history, but understanding the nature and what they have with this, you know, amazing national park as their backyard, but the heritage too of their region. And I think that is really, really special because sometimes areas don't quite get it, you know, just saying, not trying to be negative, but when one does, then for a visitor coming to town and even for the local community, you know, it's like, Hey, we are part of our history. We are part of our heritage, part of our culture for the locals. We embrace it. We are part of it and they're living it and not just taking it for granted. So I think it's great on a local level. And then for the visitors coming in, because then everybody's talking the same language and there's a respect and there's a, no, you know, it's a respect. And it, then it's it like, is. And, when you and, come and, you in, know, you I, have a better I, respect as a visitor. Absolutely. I think you do as a, as a tourist. But I think, you know, the, the people who live there, you know, like you said, they've embraced their place, this special place, this special little corner uh, in, in North Dakota. And they they are wonderful about wanting, you know, they really want to share it with people who come mm. from all over. And, you know, it's it's I love I love small towns. I think it's a really wonderful mm. opportunity to talk to, to locals and uh, to be able to spend time. And they, they mm-hmm. are eager to share this special place with visitors. And so I always feel like, oh, I'm really welcome here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's a cool it's thing the feeling to be then welcome. You live there. <laughs> then you want to live there. Then you're like, you know, that's, that's our no, thing. You always want to live everywhere. <laughs> but actually, no, it's, it's, you know, there's places that, like Natchitoches, Louisiana, we just came back from there. You know, we just were there, I should say, not back, but we, yeah, we ended up there again this year. We were there last year, the same time of year. It's weird. <laughs> um, it just happens. We just keep going back there. 
but this is a community that loves its history, its culture, mm-hmm. its music, its everything. Of oh, course. Cool. And I think that's why we're so drawn to keep going back. And there's always another story to tell. There's always something because the locals are part of the then and now. And that yes. cycle keeps going on. And I think that's that, that's when you find those special places. I do have to ask you before we go, um, when you think of the far west, right, the big grand prairies that you went out to, South Dakota, North Dakota, those areas, was the sky big and blue? <laughs> I would say at times it's big and blue, and then there's times when <laughs> a storm can come through and it's big and gray. <laughs> <laughs> but is the sky big? Is the sky big yes. and yes. open? Yes, yes, we think it, it will be. Yes, Okay, it that's is. good it's because like... your, your song of the day is Great Blue Sky. So <laughs> oh, my blue. gosh. Well, Stretch I, it. You know, my immediate thing is when I think of the Dakotas, I think like Montana. Big blue skies, yeah. big open skies. Big, yes, uh, big sky, yeah, big sky country. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's kind of what and I thought. Can I just point out that they have birds like peregrine falcons and golden eagles that they actually fly over a hundred miles per hour. So, sorry, pronghorns and other animals, yeah. oh, you're Nancy. slow <laughs> compared. Oh, <laughs> Nancy. Well, they don't well, it's a little. There's a little difference between the the flying critters and the land mammals, you know. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would like to be one of the flying ones, right? Me too. Oh, I really would. Yes. I would like what to a, be a what flying a nice critter. bird's eye view, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My gosh. And no hunters in the <laughs> around me at that yeah, time. Thank you. Dude. I'd like to no survive hunters. that. But at this point, everyone, uh, the website for the Park Service is nps.gov. So go to that website and you'll find all of our 400 plus, 420 plus parks, uh, national park units, national monuments, national trails, scenic byways, national parks, obviously, uh, including uh, this wonderful park. And you can go right to nps.gov forward slash T-H-R-O for Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Um, also, Medora, go check it out. Go to their website, medora.com. It's M E. D-O-R-A, Medora.com. And uh, it's really good to always chat with you, Debbie. You've been all over this year. It's been yes. an interesting, different year with you. And where's next? Um, actually, you mentioned where's next. Part of it is going to be Sequoia and Kings uh, National <clears throat> Parks. And then cool. we are um, spending time. We've rented a house on the Oregon coast. And um, Oh, cool. So we're going to be in the Northwest for a while. We're also going to come back and spend some time at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. Oh, um, my, my favorite place. And then also a great, mm. great basin, Great Basin National Park as well. <gasps> ah, cool. so, oh, you know we're jealous, right? But you know. You, okay. How could you be jealous? You, you're, all, you're all over the place as well. <laughs> Today we're in Tampa taking care of a beautiful, beautiful French poodle named Chilu. <laughs> beautiful. And I took her for a walk, and I see wood storks on people's houses. How bad can it be? That's so cool. Wood storks walking through a neighborhood, ibis flying in, literally landing oh at my, my feet. Gosh. And <sighs> they have an interesting little way of communicating. Like one dude is pecking at the other one's butt. I was like, oh, you're pinching your butt with your beak. That's mean. That's rude. No, the ibis have a whole other thing. They have a whole, like, I need Dude, to watch ibis a little pecking, bit more. The pecking and sniffing of the butt is rampant oh, through no, the Nancy, animal no, kingdom. No, 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 no. No, it was true. a pecking. They call it the pecking order for reasons. I don't know. But I watched that. I watched that. But anyway... No, but honestly, you are going to some of the places that um, Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park is near and dear to Nancy and I's heart. We've been there multiple times. Mm, We're going back in spring of 2021. And so I'm really glad you're going to be there. So we definitely have to have a radio chat. I want to hear I want to hear your experiences there. Um, But also, I want you to know. Yesterday, we just interviewed a mystery author called August Norman about. Uh, his mystery novel that's set on the Oregon coast mm-hmm. in a tiny town, and it's all about crazy cults. So I just want Ooh. you to be careful. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, that <laughs> is funny. Oh my gosh. But you'll be, you'll be fine. I know because it's, yes. it's cold. I, I am. I am. I'm going to be busy. Uh, I, I'm going to be busy having some clam chowder and checking out lighthouses and uh, you know, oh. doing mm-hmm. doing the beach and looking at the sea stacks and all that good stuff. So no, I'm. It's a it's a place I'm very familiar with and really looking forward to returning. Oh, uh, I can't wait to hear more. Great. And also Great Basin. Yes. And listen, Oregon, you are one of the most beautiful states of all places. Oh. I can't help it that yes. fiction gets weird. But but really, um, listen, listen, Great Basin, we can't wait to hear about that. That's a park that is um, one of the, it's, a, it's iconic in its own right when people go there. They just have to get there. And I can't wait mm-hmm. to hear about your yes. experience there, for sure. So yes. thank you so much for joining us again. Everybody, we're going to play this song, Great Blue Sky from Evan Ozan. I know we've played this for you before. But we're going to play it again because I just figured it's a beautiful <laughs> great blue sky in North Dakota in Teddy Roosevelt's National Park. Uh, you can get this from the album Alluvia, and you can go to ozanmusic.com. You can get it on all those other streaming places. But also keep up with Debbie. You'll see her article about her experience up on nationalparktraveling.com and in the fall issue of Parks and Travel magazine. So thanks so much, Debbie. You travel safe and have a good time and keep being a good fire monkey. We thought of you with fireflies in Arkansas, by the way. We're like, look, it's baby Debbies. Baby Debbies are everywhere. <laughs> well, you, 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 travel, you travel safe, too, and, and take care, and we'll be in touch again, okay? All right. Take care. All right. There bye-bye. It is, everyone. Bye. Great blue sky. Thank you. 